you start to throw your combos and your game plan out the window sometimes. You just get desperate and you're like, ah! Hey guys, John here, aka Bruce Lee. I'm a kickboxing teacher from Canada, and today we're reacting to Here Comes the Boom, starring Kevin James, aka Paul Bart, Mall Cop. Uh, back when I watched this movie in like 2012, uh, I wasn't really an expert yet, so I couldn't tell you if it was real or fake or good or bad. Uh, but hopefully, nine years later, I know a little bit better. And we're gonna give it a score today on two criteria, okay? One out of ten, based on two things, which is how realistic we think it is and how entertaining it is. Since that's that's really the main purpose of the movie. Let's start our breakdown right now. I miss my Goldberg. Oh, big Superman punch, long range. So, so far this is pretty realistic. Some people who uh, launch a big jumping kick like that or jumping punch in the beginning is to make their opponent kind of like hesitate, be like, whoa! And they kind of just start taking a back step and then uh, what happens is they just start like, you know, hugging like the wall or like they keep backing up and uh, essentially what they're doing is giving you the initiative. Uh, I think a big long range jump like that realistically doesn't work in most fights because you see it coming a mile away. So anyone trained is gonna actually just hit you while you're in the air or uh, like just get out of the way, right? It's very simple to dodge. Flurry of punches, body and head sneaking through. Pretty real. Yep. And attacks the leg. All right, so what's happening here? I'm gonna back up only a little bit. So he's doing a head punches, body punches, and they're starting to slip through. Paul Blart is just covering up and not able to deal with the sheer volume and speed of punches. And what uh, Dietrich, so the guy in the tattoos he's fighting does, is he attacks the legs, the good way to switch it up. And uh, cause you know, you're focused on everything up here. You're not thinking about down there. You take a leg kick. And then what he does is uh, as Paul Blart covers up some more, he actually grabs him, softens him up with a couple of knees. And then as his hands are still up, he he, sh he shoots for a double leg takedown, which means he drops down and grabs him around the waist. And I think picks him up for a slam here. Yeah. Your objective here is to hit him into the ground as hard as you can by like obviously pulling him down and falling with them. You're using your body weight. It's very scary, just like this. So that does hurt. So uh, not only does it knock the wind out of uh, your out of your lungs a little bit, is that that whiplash of like your head going against the canvas uh, is known to even knock people out. So if you look up like Matt Hughes or Ken Norton, uh, there's absolutely precedent for that to happen. Or even in Muay Thai where sweeps are allowed, sometimes you get slammed to the mat like this and it absolutely hurts. Uh, so this is very real so far. Good ground and pound, keep swarming them. Ooh. And kind of a Superman elbow. If that Superman elbow landed, that would have caused a cut at the very least, or even knocked that guy out. So uh, that's a pretty. So right here, where he comes down, it's pretty savage. And you'll see, uh, you'll see like Dan Henderson landed something like that, like a, a downward forearm onto Michael Bisping and just knocked him straight out. Good ground and pound. Pull it down. So the reason his coach, uh, who is actually played by Bass Rutten, one of the first UFC heavyweight champions ever, very legit guy, is to pull him down. As you see here, while uh, the executioner or Dietrich is up uh, with his posture, he can actually punch down and have all this gravity and space to accelerate his punches. If you pull his neck or his posture down and he's kind of tight against you, he can do a lot less damage. So it is smart to kind of pull a guard. So you want to pull a guard. Uh, Paul Blart wants to actually wrap his legs uh, around uh, the waist and start to control the hands or the neck or the posture somehow to stop this onslaught. So you see how he's coming up and slamming down like don't give him the space is ideal. Alright. That is terrifying. So uh, Paul Blart needs to be careful because if he, he does another round just like that, the, the fight will end. Because basically, if you're just covering up and not fighting back, you saw Herb Dean, the referee in black, he's kind of getting a closer look like this. Um, is that uh, if, if it looks one-sided, his job is to protect you from taking like, unnecessary damage. So if he deems the fight is over, he'll award the other person uh, the win. 
That's Bass Rootin' right there. So what it means by uh, when you hit someone flush uh, is when like uh, you're not able to. So there's two ways to alleviate the, the damage of a punch: is to block or partially block uh, on the way in, or to roll with the punch. If you hit flush, it means you're just literally standing right there and taking the full force of the punch. Very painful. Oh yeah, that's Stitch. So the Stitch here is a very famous uh, cut man who's in, who's uh, worked on. You know, hundreds, if not thousands, of famous boxers. Uh, when he was working for, I think HBO, he was working in the UFC for a bit, but I believe there was some contract disagreement, so he doesn't do uh, UFC fights anymore. But a uh, very famous and considered to be one of the best cut men. Uh, the cut men, what well, their their job in between rounds is to, if you have any cuts or uh, swelling, is to minimize that so you can continue the fight without obstruction. Oh. That's very realistic. So when you've taken a lot of damage in the previous round or two rounds, you start to throw your combos and your game plan out the window sometimes. You just get desperate and you're like, ah, right? And you're trying to do whatever you can to end the fight and get out of there or just take your opponent out. Pretty realistic. Yeah. So that's the danger with jumping up like that, is that in the air, you can't change direction, you can't really block, or you know what I mean? Like, you're, you're committed, which means you're vulnerable to get countered, or in this case, he just caught him in the air and uh, slammed him down. So, I do teach, like, jumping or, like, flying techniques, but I'm, I don't place a big emphasis on that, because exactly this, you're kind of vulnerable. They scramble out. Oh, Showtime kick! Woo! So let's look at that again. So what Dietrich has done is he's jumped off the wall, taken two steps, and then uh, launched and did, uh, did a kick to the head. And the uh, kind of the thought process behind that is that you want to get your elevation because even though he can do a regular head kick by uh, jumping up, he's kind of bringing his weight and gravity down uh, into the acceleration and adding more power. Now this kick is uh, it is very showy, but that's not why it's called the Showtime kick. Uh, this is called that because it was pulled off in a real fight, I believe, in Strike Force 2010 by Anthony Showtime Pettis. That was his nickname against Benson Henderson to win the belt and. Uh, Absolutely, you know, I don't want to say it's realistic and that anyone can do it, but it has happened in a big time fight before, so in that sense, it is definitely real. Oh, very, very cool. And smothers them. Pull guard, that's what I was talking about before, where you want to control your opponent and not let them punch you. Yeah, you gotta pull them. Uh, okay, it's a good scramble. Oh, it takes a spinning elbow. So what Paul Blart has done is basically turn his hip, shoulders, and knees uh, all the same direction, which is correct. And then you want to sprawl or like kind of spring your feet out to get back up to your feet. But on the way up, uh, Dietrich has, uh, has kept his head down and brought up a spinning elbow. That's pretty realistic, actually. And it just keeps punching him. <laughs> Round three. Good slip and counter. So what Paul Bart did there was actually uh, he dipped just the slightest bit. He moved his shoulders and head just out of the way of a punch coming in. And then he comes back over with a big hook. That's very realistic. Does a knee while he's stunned. Good reversal. And a good front kick. So that there is a teep kick. Uh, that's how Paul Blart managed to get his opponent off. So he brings up his left knee. He brings up his left knee and drives his opponent away by digging his the ball of his foot into uh, the other person's torso or body. Uh, very realistic. This teep kick or front kick, like it's the first and last kick I always throw. So it's absolutely one of the biggest fundamentals of kickboxing or Muay Thai. You gotta be quick with it too. Which, again, everything there, very real. A big load up on your front kick is just slow. Oh. Let's back up to two seconds there. Look at Dietrich's face. 
So right here, he looks a little bit worried or a little bit concerned. Obviously, he's winning the fight, so why does he have this face on him? It's because Dietrich, and uh, so he put everything out in those first two rounds, right? So he might be tired now, or like, it's just discouraging when like, you have someone in front of you, and you, you give it everything, right? You give them your best shot, and even though you're winning, they're still there, right? You expect it to knock them out by now, and they're still, they're still fighting, they're still kicking. Um, and it can absolutely be discouraging like this. Another good slip. It's more of a weave. <laughs> oh, got countered. So if you guys might have missed that, um, Dietrich actually jumps off the cage for that Superman punch. So watch his right leg there. That's very realistic. Uh, Anthony Pettis, the same guy who did the Showtime kick, he actually landed this against Steven Thompson a couple years ago and knocked him out, so very real. Okay. Woo! He's winning. It's good. That was a perfect thing to do in that situation. The only thing with that head kick is that it's, it kind of, it actually missed. Obviously, it's like a stunt, so. You'll see here that uh, Paul Blart, the mechanic of his, his right hand swiping down, his left hip coming forward, very real, but he kind of hits him, like not at all, or like kind of with his heel. What you want to see actually is that um, his shin should be hitting the guy's temple, and then his foot should come around to the back of his head. You'll see here that nothing actually landed, nothing hit Dietrich, but uh, you know, obviously they're filming, right? Shooting for a takedown. I'm surprised he's done this. It was a good entry, so while the person had left his hips wide open, Paul Bart does a double leg takedown and uh, enters into the hips there. Uh, but his corner told him a couple of rounds not to go to the ground, so... I think it's a little surprising he'll do it. I usually prefer to listen to my corner, but the opportunity was there, so... Stacked him up. He's gotta watch out, he's standing up fully. Okay. Oh. Yeah, see. So that's why I was saying you gotta be careful uh, when you're sta standing up like this. See right here where Paul Blart is standing up completely. His knees are off the ground, his hands are off the ground. So he's allowed to get kicked in the head by an up kick, which Dietrich does in a few seconds here. A legal move, and we've actually seen it, uh, people knock other people out with that up kick. So it's very dangerous. Uh, it actually is. So, when you elevate yourself up, it means you have more power on your ground and pound, there's more power on your punches, but you're susceptible to that headshot. What the ideal thing to do here is to have one knee up and one knee down, because as long as one knee is planted by the rules of the UFC, they're not allowed to kick you or knee you in the head. So that's pretty realistic. That right there, where he snuck his foot up, hit him with the heel, and Paul Bart falls down into a triangle, so he's, he's in the threat of getting a choke by having Dietrich uh, squeeze his legs together, or he can go in for an armbar. So the reason saying don't lose that grip is that if uh, if you give your opponent control of your arm, so what you want to do is actually kind of uh, get the seatbelt together, so clasp the hands together, so they can't extend or control either arm. Uh, this right here though, he's gonna fight for the grip. So he turns to the side, now it's an arm bar. So uh, Dietrich's objective is to actually hyperextend uh, Paul Bart's arm. Very realistic. If Paul Bart loses the grip, he could lose the fight. Oh! Oh! He's not tapped, so what's happening here? If you look at his elbow, it's actually kind of uh, behind the crotch almost. If that elbow was in front, uh, kind of more to the groin, this fight would definitely be over. Uh, as it is, the way that he has the leverage isn't quite at the right spot, which is why sometimes you can push through the pain. Or if you look at Misha Tate, uh, sometimes people get arm barred successfully and they just don't tap. So to tap out, is you want to tap your opponent to signal to him and to the referee that you're surrendering the fight and giving the other person the victory. But if you never tap, theoretically you just stay in this position. You want to either get the grip back on your hand or slip out the back. Bastard is saying, you know what? I told you how to get out of this, so fall back on your technique. Always the best thing to do. Okay. So he does that, exactly that. Dietrich's forced to go back to the triangle. 
So you see here, um, if you look at Paul Blart's uh, legs, right here, both his heels are down, and he's kind of like a, kind of in a squat position. That means uh, he can absolutely deadlift someone into a slam. This is real. And these guys will start to look worried. If it's happening this slowly, what you want to do if you're the person, uh, if you're Dietrich here, you want to let your legs go and just stand up, right? The reason you can control your opponent is by having yourself tight around them, but that means they also have control of you in certain cases, just like this. So you should let go, but sometimes you panic, you hold tight. Okay, go for the slam, my guy! Boom! Here comes the boom! Again, that's 110% realistic, everybody. Uh, I get, there's precedent for it in the UFC to knock someone out with a big, big slam like that. So that was Here Comes the Boom starring Kevin James. Now, Joe Rogan, uh, the guy who's commentating in the movie, but is also the commentator in real life for the UFC, uh, he actually mentioned in his podcast that Kevin James is a very legit martial artist. And you can see here that that's absolutely true. Uh, Dietrich, uh, Bass Rutten, Joe Rogan, Stitch, Mike Goldberg, they clearly brought in a lot of legit people that consult or to be a part of this movie. And I believe Jason Mayhem Miller was actually uh, one, of the, uh, one of Paul Blatt's opponents earlier in the movie another high-level uh, MMA athlete so very legit stuff you're seeing here the only thing that wasn't super realistic is how much Dietrich there jumped up off the wall and stuff you can absolutely land those things but I don't find that people do it very often because you're susceptible to stuff like it's hard to, to land those things when you're jumping all the time it's hard to get predictable so um, overall though very very cool because uh, everything with the grappling, the takedowns, punches, knees, kicks, uh, out of that one kind of like uh, stunt kick that Paul Blart did is very, very real. Um, so I'm going to give this a score of a 9.5 out of 10, which is I know is very high, but I thought it was so realistic. And the, uh, Bass Rutten, I think, uh, trained Kevin James in real life, and that was one of the first uh, UFC heavyweight champions, uh, a very complete martial artist. So uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm also going to give it a score on entertainment factor. So I'm going to give that a 10 out of 10. Uh, this movie is really good. I recommend you guys check it out. It's very funny the whole time until now. So comment below, guys, what you guys thought. Was it fun? Did it seem real? Uh, did it not seem real? Uh, any other movie clips you want me to check out and break down for y'all, please comment as well. And don't forget to please like and subscribe to see more of the content or just to support the channel. It helps me out big time. And I'll see you next time. Bruce Lee out.